Hello, my name is Simon Lipscomb and welcome to the Officio Spotlight podcast and Happy New Year to everyone. So as I sit here today, we're in the very early days of 2021 and as regular listeners will know, we've been using the last few of these podcasts to discuss with colleagues and look back at some of the issues of the crazy and unparalleled year that was 2020 and and perhaps look a little bit at what 2021 might hold for us all. And obviously very hard to have any conversation about 2020 or indeed the immediate future without discussing coronavirus, which is the issue that has dominated much of our lives for so long now. And on that basis, I'm very privileged and very excited actually to say that in today's podcast, I'm joined by, I think, one of the people that can genuinely lay claim to be working at the very heart of this topic, or certainly within the UK, and that's Jackie Rock. So Jackie is the Chief Commercial Officer at NHS Test and Trace. She was previously Commercial Director at the Ministry of Defence, and then spent 30 years prior to that in financial services and investment banking. And so for our listeners in the UK, it's probably fair to say that Test and Trace is probably one of the best known and most talked about organisations in the country at the moment but a brief piece of context perhaps for some people outside of the UK so Test and Trace is the organisation that was formed by the UK government and as the name would suggest has responsibility for kind of testing tracing the UK population's exposure to COVID-19 and the entire organisation was created from scratch when it was founded in the beginning of June and it now has the largest testing capacity in Europe having conducted 41 million tests created capacity to form about half a million a day an app that's been downloaded 20 million times and infrastructure now which is contacted 2 million people to to ask them to isolate. So I think for those reasons and many more, and for my mind, I think the project can lay claim to be one of the most complicated, highly visible and urgent procurement and supply chain challenges of our time. So hence why I'm so pleased that Jackie has agreed to give some of her precious time to have this conversation with me today. I should also say in interest of transparency that that we as a fish and myself as an individual have been working on test and trace. So in that sense, we're not completely objective in this discussion. But Jackie, just in terms of starting, I, I remember going back to the early days of testing and tracing and I think you just joined the organization you'd pulled together a meeting for the various business partners that were working with you on the project and actually distinctly remember at the time thinking wow this this lady's taken on quite the role just the sheer scale and the size of the challenge so perhaps for start I'd be really interested to kind of personally what led you to that point of, of taking the job I guess given the size of it and the scale of it and the profile of it. Thanks, Simon. And hi, everybody. Thank you very much for letting me share some time with you and some some thoughts today. So, yeah, what an interesting journey it's been. Quite unprecedented and unlike anything else I've done in in my career to date. So having spent most of my career, in fact, all of my career in the private sector, I took a great big leap of faith three years ago, coming from private sector into public sector anyway. So it's kind of what I do. And and moving from banking into defence was absolutely fascinating and challenging. And I haven't looked back. And I was really very much enjoying the role that I was playing um, in defence, leading the commercials. And so when the opportunity, I'll call it an opportunity, came up to go and work on Test and Trace rather than would you like to do it, you are being volunteered. Initially, I said no. Initially, I was kind of, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a poison chalice, this one. Test and Trace has been, from from the minute it was set up, a very highly scrutinised criticised function. I think a lot of the general public and the government, the political side of things, expected Test and Trace to be a bit of a silver bullet as opposed to a facilitator to break the chains of COVID. So I I did come into this with eyes wide open. Teams had been working for three or four months, sort of of February, when we first started realising that we were going to have a massive problem, February 20 here. So work had been done, but we didn't really have a proper end-to-end commercial service, an operating model, a fully functioning team, etc. To be honest with you, it was just that when I had this opportunity, it was too important. It was too critical to the UK public and the UK public's health. And I just thought it was going to be an incredibly exciting and demanding role for me to take on. So I came into this with eyes wide open and haven't really looked back, haven't had time to look back. And it's been absolutely It's been challenging, it's been heartbreaking, it's been exhausting, it's been exhilarating. And from a development perspective, it has taught me things I never thought I would learn throughout my career. So it's been amazing. 
uh, Jackie, I mean, given the sheer scale of that ask, and as you say, the, the importance of it and everything, where did you even start? Even the organisation was being formed around you. There was this, all of these procurement and commercial requirements. I guess every single one had urgency, time scale. There was so many moving parts. Just as an individual, how do you even start to work out how you get your arms around that and put the right structures and processes in place? So I went back to the data. Um, I'm an accountant by trade. Show me the numbers. Show me the data. Let me understand what we've done so far, what we've bought so far, what we've spent so far, with which suppliers, with which route to market. And there, there was a challenge in the first instance, because you have to remember test and trace in those early days. And when I first joined was very much a crisis response unit. We still really are a crisis response unit, but we can't continue to work in that kind of environment. At some stage, we had to mature we had to stop being a little bit like the wild west and we had to have plans and strategy and structure so that is what i brought into test and trace from a commercial perspective along with the cfo that came in we sort of came in and put our arms around everything and, and really in effect kind of got everything to calm down a bit and to make sure that we had all the data, make sure that everything we did had been justifiable. My responsibility, we are spending a lot of money as a, Her Majesty's government on test and trace. And it is my responsibility to ensure that every single penny of that public spending is accounted for, is justified, has got the correct route to markets, has been done in the compliant way. So that's where I started. It was literally just sort of unpicking what is the as is and then very quickly putting in an operating model. I put in an operating model within two weeks. Usually that kind of transformation can take, you know, anything up to a year within an organization. It just goes to show how quick we can actually do it in that environment. Test and Trace is, a, is now quite a sizable organization, a sizable part in government. But I mean, from your point of view, how important has the procurement and commercial side of that been in terms of the achievements that have been made today, which I think are considerable. We talked about some of the numbers at the start. Absolutely. And I will sort of talk about from a commercial point of view, we've built an organisation as complex, as large as Sainsbury's in about four months. So you can imagine that the sort of, as I say, the complexities, the logistics around all of that. And when I first came in, you know, without commercial, there is no test to trace. There is no sort of COVID response. This isn't a group of civil servants just doing this on our own. This is a group of over 50,000 people. When you look at everybody that is involved in the test and trace, right from myself to people that are out there at the test centers, to the people that are manning the labs, to the people that are driving the tests around, to the technicians that are creating the app. 50,000, there's a lot of people all working towards test and trace. So from a commercial perspective, if it isn't just a government response, which of course it isn't, everything has to be bought and everything has to be managed and our suppliers need to be engaged. Our suppliers need to have good contracts in place so that we all understand what our job is. These are some of my commercial challenges. I really needed our suppliers to have that level of trust with the government. But sometimes that's asking quite a lot because everything changes and it flexes literally on a 24 hour basis. This is a pandemic we're dealing with. Policies change. What we thought we were going to do three months ago is a very different strategy now. So it's been really important for me and my team to work with our suppliers so that continued trust, partnership and collaboration is there. I just want to thank all our suppliers for their patience as well. A lot of our suppliers have been working not necessarily outside of contract, but with very kind of vague contracts. It's sometimes taken a while to put up costing models, etc. And a lot of people have invested a lot of time and resource into this, this fight against this virus. So it's definitely been challenging commercially. We learned a lot from the PPE. We learned an awful lot in the UK in terms of what we need, modelling, forecasting, storing, etc. And so I made sure that all of those lessons learned come into our category strategies as we take commercial going forward. Again, Jackie, I suppose inevitably with anything of, I guess, this high profile and this close to everybody's day to day lives, there are clearly no shortages of opinions in the press or in the wider world around test and trace or, or matters to do with COVID. I mean, when you are trying to stand up from scratch, something as complicated in Sainsbury's, what's it like having that added dimension of that commentary, rightly yeah. or wrongly? I mean, it's just there. Yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough as a leader. It's been tough as an exec, it's been tough as an individual because people have worked 
tirelessly. We don't wear it as a badge of honour, but it has been a seven day a week and, and very, very long hours for a considerable sustained amount of time now. As you'll see in the NHS, having to stand up those hours, or so is everybody in vaccines and so is everybody in test and trace. And Again, one of those development things, really, it's how do I lead a team that are tired, that are constantly being criticised and scrutinised by the press? You know, we've had some very, very difficult weeks with the media. I think everybody was expecting Test and Trace to somehow be, the, as I said, the silver bullet. I mentioned that earlier. But what we are is we are an absolute key to facilitating how we are going to break this, along with vaccines, along with obviously the healthcare. Our job is to know the numbers, our Joint Biosecurity Centre. Our job is to make sure that we are looking at the innovation to get all of the tests that, that are out there in the world and, and the technology around those tests. Our job is to buy those tests for the UK public. It is to distribute those tests. It is to ensure that the public have trust in what we do. It is to ensure that we've got a trace and contain system in place so via apps, etc. So yeah, really, really complicated in terms of what we're delivering. And yet, as I said, we were still up for an awful lot of scrutiny. And that kind of will continue, I think. I think we're in a much better place than we were, if you remember back into the summer when people couldn't get tests at test centres. We had people sort of almost almost running riot at test centres and physically abusing test centre workers. Uh, we've really gone through it and it's very hard. It's very hard to come in and speak to the team and to fill them all with the drive and the ambition and almost don't look at the press. It's yeah, we need yeah. to look at the press yeah. to understand public opinion. But I, I think everybody that's working on this program absolutely is proud to be here. We've all got a very, very common mission that we all want to work towards. And so therefore keeping everybody focused, keeping everybody on mission, keeping everybody in a positive way has been my job. It's been Dido Harding's job and the rest of the executives. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very, very proud of the team. I think rightly so. And so obviously Test and Trace is a, is a kind of brand new organisation that's been been created from scratch, as we mentioned upon earlier. And, and I guess that plus the nature of this topic and the incredibly fast moving nature of, of everything connected to coronavirus, she must have required considerable amounts of innovation, right? Different thinking, different ways of doing things. I mean, it'd be interesting to get your experience on that, Jackie. Yes, absolutely. And I'll, I'll cover a couple of things that we've never had to do before and we had to stand up very quickly. So for example, let, let's talk about the test sites that many people that are listening today would have now been to one of the test sites. So we've put in place the largest network of diagnostic testing facilities ever created in British history. We've got over 80 drive through sites, 397 walk through sites, 19 satellite sites, 258 mobile testing units. So overall, it's over 700 test sites available across the UK. And when we started out, it really literally was teams of people in car parks with chalk laying out where cars were going to come in and laying out bollards. So I'm incredibly proud of the, the test centres that we have. And that's now expanding so that you know, we can start taking testing to more familiar surroundings, such as, you know, supermarkets, places of worship, doctors, surgeries, community centres, schools. So it really has, has gone on leaps and bounds. Another thing that we had to do was contact centres. These are the people that when you've been notified that you've got a positive result or indeed that you've been in contact with someone from COVID that will contact you and, and therefore to tell you what you need to do. It was back in March that number 10, the Prime Minister, requested a national shielding service. And he wanted that set up for 2 million people in seven days. And we did that. We did that. We had 2,000 staff call vulnerable people, confirming that they needed to be shielded. And within six weeks, we stood up a 14,000 strong team to be our contact, our trace and our contain. And then finally, the lab. So we call them the Lighthouse Labs. Those of you will know that we've got the Nightingale Hospitals. These are the Lighthouse Labs. And we didn't have enough labs with the diagnostic testing capacity, nowhere near, uh, not, not even near the, you know, scratching the surface that we would need for the amount of testing that we did. So what again, we've built the largest diagnostic testing capacity in British history now. So we've got a series of labs all over the country that have stood up and are working around the clock 24 seven, right over Christmas, etc. So that as the testing demand increases, the logistics that has to be set up is amazing to get to the labs. And then the labs are testing it. We're, we're at a rate recently where 
95% of the British public was given their test results back from lab testing, this is, within 24 hours. So it's been a great achievement. And, you know, these are just, these are just some of the amazing innovations that we've put in place in incredibly short periods of time, working with collaboration with our suppliers. I was thinking, Jackie, I'm sure one of the the questions lots of people had, I mean, thankfully, we've had really positive news about vaccines in recent weeks. Does the kind of mass rollout of the vaccination programme mean that test and trace effectively goes away and isn't required anymore? Not at all. So absolutely, we are equally thrilled about the news on the vaccines and the rollout. And test and trace are working hand in hand with the vaccine team. We're not separate functions. We're working together to ensure that we're complementary in terms of breaking the chains of COVID. But from test and trace, you know, we're not going to be disbanding anytime soon. We're going to have to continue to test in a clinical and primary care settings to protect the most vulnerable for quite a long while to come. Whilst the vaccine is great, it shouldn't be seen as a panacea as the full rollout is going to take many months, you know, most of 2021, for it to reach the whole population. And for those who cannot or do not have the vaccine, testing is still going to be required. So, so you know, we think test and trace, it'll evolve, it'll change shape, but it, it's going to be around for, for quite a few years to come. And Jackie, again, accepting that the subject matter is a terrible thing, the virus is a terrible thing. Are there, are there positives that you've seen either personally or procurement and supply chain during this period? And do you see positives coming the other side of this in any way? So absolutely, we have to, we have to make sure that we do a lot of lessons learned, you know, when we get through this virus. This has been unprecedented for the government. This has been unprecedented for the government commercial, how we've been buying things, the pace at which we've been able to move, the level of speed, the innovation. It's been quite unlike anything we've seen before. I often, coming from defence, it has been a, a war a war zone, a conflict situation. We are in conflict against this virus. And the way that the government has been able to react and move at pace and the collaboration has been phenomenal. So I am personally taking that as one of my sort of charges into 2021 and beyond, that it would be an absolute travesty if we just went back to sort of the old ways of doing things, the old policy and and the old procurement. So that's one of my key learnings and what I want to take forward. Fantastic. And Jackie, thank you one for taking the time to talk to us today. It is really appreciated. I know how busy you are. Wanted to say thank you to to you and and everyone that works on Test and Trace. I mean, I've been on the periphery, but I've seen some of the most committed, the most hardest working professionals I've ever seen in, in my career all working at this seven days a week to the benefit of everyone. And given the context of the press and the sometimes negative coverage, I think we as a fisio and I as an individual wanted to say thank you to you and everyone. I think it's extraordinary what's been achieved. Thank you. I'm, I'm really confident that as the vaccine programme continues to roll out and as test and trace moves into a home testing environment, a mass testing environment where we're able to literally, it'll, it'll just be part of people's every day. You know, you'll take a test once a week, you'll you go and pick it up from Boots or wherever. It'll just become our, our rhythm of the next one to two years. And we'll be able to settle into offering a, an amazing service with Public Health England to ensure that, that we are con- continued finger on, on, on this virus uh, and continue tracking and tracing of it. So I've entered into this year feeling really, really positive. It's difficult to feel really positive where we are in the UK right now, January 21. The numbers are terrifying. Saw the numbers this morning that have gone up to the Prime Minister. Decisions are being made on a day-to-day basis. The tiering system is very effective, but this, this particular strain of this virus is just the infection rates are rising everywhere. So again, test and trace needs to be absolutely prepared so that we can ease the country as it comes out of the the sort of lockdown or a tier four environment. We need to be there as we start unlocking and trying to return the public back to normal uh, when we get through this next particular wave. Fantastic. Jackie, as I say, thank you so much for the time and the conversation. Thank you for the work and everything that's been done. And we really appreciate it. Uh, Also, thank you to everyone that's listened. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please like, comment, follow up on Spotify. If there's anything you want to add, please let me know or on our LinkedIn page, we'd love to add you to the conversation. But as I say, Jackie, thank you so much for your time. I know how precious it is and it's really appreciated that you gave us some of that for today. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you.